I would like to share with you that I did have breast cancer. So on this one particular day, I was sitting meditating and at the end of the meditation, I decided to add in a little prayer and ask for Jesus to come near. Now, I said that with a smile on my face because I didn't used to do that. It was something that I thought of that day and I just called him in. And to my amazement, I felt his presence. And my hands were on my lap and I felt my hand begin to twitch like it wanted to move. It lifted up and it placed itself onto the breast where I'd had the cancer. But then I felt the hand continue to go into my body. I felt this kind of warm hand go in. I knew I was well after that day. I knew, I knew I had been healed. I knew I'd been healed. And also I'd lost my fear of death. Hello, Gail. A warm welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So pleased to be here. It's lovely having you. And I know that you are an intuitive channeler of TARP, who are extraterrestrial beings from the Andromedas. And we might be meeting them today. You're also an author. You're helping people transform their lives in this huge awakening that we're experiencing. And you are a hypnotherapist. You have been meditating for, I think, around 20 years. And you've been here on this path for quite some time. Now, I'm curious to hear about your story, how you actually started to channel TARP, these extraterrestrial beings, because I know you also had cancer and that this is connected to you starting to channel. So please, could you share with us our story and everything that's relevant to that? Uh, so my story, yes, okay. So I would like to share with you that I did have breast cancer and it was on my healing journey that I had uh, a Christ experience. So I decided not to follow the normal allopathic way for healing and I embarked on a full-time project of many different modalities and healing treatments on myself, in including um, breathing, yoga, sleeping, intravenous therapy, many other things, in infrared saunas and things like that, and meditation. So I meditated for a couple of hours every day and it's been a while since I've meditated for that long a period. I've done it before and I know that it can change many things in life if you're not going through a good patch in life. So at this time, I decided to really focus on the meditation and try to change the biology going on inside me. And I decided to talk to the cancer cells and try and will myself back to a state of balance. Um, and this would include mantra it would include prayer and affirmations so on this one particular day I was sitting meditating and at the end of the meditation and I had my husband sitting next to me meditating too I decided to add in a little prayer and ask for Jesus to come near now I said that with a smile on my face because I didn't used to do that it was something that I thought of that day and I just called him in and to my amazement I felt his presence come in. I say his, it's more an energy. Um, and it came all around me and I was sitting on the floor cross-legged and my hands were on my lap and I felt my hand begin to twitch like it wanted to move. It lifted up and it placed itself onto the breast where I'd had the cancer. But then I felt the hand continue to go into my body. I felt this kind of warm hand go in. And I felt this warm energy envelop me all the way around. And it was a very beautiful, very humbling, very blissful experience. And I started to cry with happiness and, and, and feeling so humble because I knew what was happening. And I knew that this was a very special thing I was witnessing and it would only last a few seconds. So that's what happened. So my husband saw me cry and he said, what, what happened to you? And I said, I can't put it into words. I can't explain, but this is what I felt. I felt Jesus come to me and I felt him put his hand into my breast and I felt him all around me, like envelop me. So the next day I couldn't wait to go back into the, um, 
meditation that I'd done the previous day and I thought I'm going to do exactly the same things that I did the previous day going to follow the same sequence of events and then I'm going to ask if Jesus will be there and ask him to come in again so I called him in said if you're there and I, I don't expect you to come back once is just the most amazing thing but if you're there will you come in now I felt him come back but I never felt him come into my body and around my body the way he did on the first day I felt him close and then I also felt something else that felt very blissful I knew that there was something else there and then it felt like I was speaking in a tunnel I felt like all my thoughts were being echoed through a tunnel and I could hear things back so that was day two day three I called in Jesus again he didn't come but the others were there. So this is what ended up being TARP. And I started speaking to them and asking them questions. I was in a very blissful state. And then they started to move my body. They started to lift my hand up off my lap and move my arms back behind me. And I could hear kind of cracks going on, the clicks and cracks on my spine. And then they'd move my neck. So my head and neck was going round all the way one way and then to the other. And I could hear little clicks going up and down my spine and in my neck and the base of my skull. And um, this continued for a couple of days. And then I started to ask some questions, yes and no. And my head started to nod up for yes and across for no. And then they started to use my mouth to talk. And I started sort of going through these um vowel sounds sort of babbling that happened over a few days and then I would say over a period of about a couple of weeks I then started to talk so it happened quite quickly and that it became fluent and I first invited apart from my husband my husband had been sitting there every day in in, in awe and amazement I then asked my children did they want to come and see what was going on when I meditated and they they weren't as shocked, actually, as my husband, and they sort of got it. So then I started channeling for them every day and then for friends here and there, um, and it just developed. And their name is Tarp. I mean, I can say that, you know, some channels have been channeling for decades. This has been a few years for me, and um, the feeling for me comes from a place of coherence. It comes from a state of bliss. And my communication with them can be very personal and intimate there are many dialogues with my children for example or the teenagers and my husband and of course um, people that come for guidance and and groups but they don't speak a lot about themselves they say that they're here at this time to help those that are sensitive and the young people so they're here to help ignite or Hmm. awaken them activate within them their knowing of themselves and their abilities but they say they're here at this time especially to help with the planet and to help with humanity that's so interesting now i i, I need to ask are you well now i am and thank you for asking i knew i was well after that day after that first day i knew I knew I had been healed. I knew I'd been healed. And also, I'd lost my fear of death. Oh, so wow. So two, two, ma two major things, because I think especially when you're a parent, no one wants to die before they're ready, but especially when you're a parent, my huge fear was having two daughters, and I was terrified about that. But that, after that experience, I lost my fear of dying because I felt like, well, it was a trans-dimensional experience. It was an experience beyond the physical, which was extremely comforting. It was, even to say it was confirmation means that there was some doubt. There was no doubt at that time when I had that experience with this Christ consciousness and then tarp of what it was. And I would say that I'm not someone who'd had many psychic experiences. I'd say I was very sensitive I'd say I was an empath, but I am quite skeptical about these things. So there was some questioning in the beginning. Are you sure that I haven't just convinced myself, but the healing and the fear, there was no denying. I was convinced that both had happened. And also uh, the doctors say that you are have recovered? 
hundred percent. Yes, 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 yes. That's amazing. I have a few friends actually who have breast cancer now, and I had one that passed away, and I, I can imagine that there are many people out there who have different diseases who are wondering can I be healed and why were you healed? And I did all the right things as well. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I know I've interviewed Anita Moriani who said that she thought that it was her fear uh, that made her develop cancer. And I've also, again, spoken to others who said, you know, we did everything, but still my son died or my husband died. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you been communicating with these uh, beings, uh, TARP, about why some are are rescued in a way and some Mm -hmm. are not, even though they're doing the work and connecting and uh, using these alternative ways, ways to heal? Another good question. And you know, Janneke, I didn't, I haven't had that discussion with TARP. For me, I understood that it was a a combination of fear, asking and belief. So I knew from previous difficulties in my life that if I go inside, I can be the alchemist of my biology. Um, And I'd done that and had I had affected change with other traumatic experiences in my life. So it's funny, when I realized I had breast cancer, I, I, I also knew that I knew that on a, on a certain level of me. It didn't seem like a surprise, and it almost seemed like something I had to go through, and it all just made sense um, when this experience happened to me. So I never had a particular dialogue with TARP as to why some people... Um, have an awakening experience and um, find the healing and others don't but I think uh, it's to do with a readiness and it and an intention an intention uh, pre-embodied in a sense and carried through um, and held in your consciousness or in your field that you know or you have an awareness that this can be overcome it's almost like a sort of a narrative that you have to live and have to go through in order to become more of who you think you should be or who you're supposed to be. So there were a lot of things that I had to address in my healing that were uncomfortable about not just health factors, but personality, character. You know, have I had a victim mentality the last few years? Possibly yes, because I'd had a really hard few years with a really, really acrimonious divorce. And so I had to ask myself these uncomfortable questions. Maybe I've been wearing the victim hat a lot and maybe I need to actually own my emotions. Maybe I need to sit with this with myself. Maybe I need to sit with this fear, confront these dark things and see where we go, but with the purest intention to try and overcome it and to just offer my body love, offer the cancer love, I decided to frame it as cancer the gift, you know, this kind of, I called it the magic cauliflower in my breast, like a tiny little cauliflower, but I decided to just reframe everything um, to affect that change. So it feels now I I know that I open to a a slightly wider bandwidth of consciousness. I say only slightly because um, it is what it is. I mean, it's, there's still so much. I, I know that I know nothing. Basically I've just become more sensitive to a certain kind of consciousness or, or bandwidth of energy, but It almost had to be that I had to go through that unique combination of struggle, adversity, fear, asking, faith, because I've always been a a spiritual person. Um, And that work, that practice and that work on my energetic body, which I had been doing with the chakras and my aura and the praying and the sending love and forgiveness. I think it's all of that in combination, to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to jump over to uh, Jesus and extraterrestrials uh, because you talked about that they came sort of at the same time in a way. One day it was Jesus, the the other day it was these extraterrestrials. And then I got a question in my mind that I've always been wondering about, uh, whether whether Jesus uh, is an alien. 
So uh, <laughs> I'm curious about it because maybe he's he's coming from another star system from a higher plane of consciousness that makes sense to me that he is an Andromedan or a Pleiadian so mm -hmm. and now they sort of came together which I thought was interesting uh maybe there's a connection there so do you have any thoughts about that I think the um the connection in that particular instance was me um but I feel that uh, the man, Jesus, that walked the earth was um, an embodied consciousness, well, the same as all of us, but I feel that Jesus is more than an embodied extraterrestrial or an embodied human. I feel it is a level, a very high level of consciousness that has been manifested and can be embodied in a a form that can be seen to us as physical. So I think it's an experience of bliss, actually. I think it's an experience of bliss that you can feel within your biology, that you can feel that almost ignites something in your DNA that puts um, an enlightenment into your DNA, which changes the consciousness of you. So if you look at people that feel they have been... Um, touched by Jesus, their whole outlook changes. It's almost overnight. It's this really obvious aura they have about them. And I think that's what it does. It, it is something that embodies a bliss within your DNA, that embodies bliss within your energetic body. It enables you to reach for this much higher frequency and it represents... Hmm, a very high, I was going to say God frequency, but I don't want to sound vague, a very, let's just call it a very high blissful frequency, a very mm -hmm. pure principled feeling of love. So is he an extraterrestrial? I, ultimately, no. And I think, well, what, I, what I've come to understand is that um, even if I'm in communication with Andromedan consciousness there is always higher consciousness than whatever other entity or extraterrestrial you may be interacting with so there's contact and I know we all get excited about contact with the ETs but there's always the higher the, the highest or the higher the kind of love light or God principle whatever word you're comfortable with that mm -hmm. that oneness and um, everything is under that umbrella including all the bad ideas of entities and the bad ideas of extraterrestrials, it all comes from the one. So the embodiment or the appearance of a Christ consciousness, if I look back on my experience, it indicates to me there was a certain opening. There was a kind of certain bliss experience with my contact that happened, which left me open to a, a frequency which was um, benevolent and blissful, which ended up being tarp. So it, it kind of opened a door, if you like, for, for that contact. Yes, makes a lot of sense at the same time. A part of me wants to understand who he is, what uh, sort of category we can put the different beings and energies in. And I find myself not getting answers to that because it's my left mind trying to understand and I don't think we can really understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's interesting and it fascinates me. Uh, but I think you're right. I think like Jesus and Jesus uh, and Buddha and these masters, they are of a very high frequency and um, are sort of very close to the source in general. And then we're split yes. into different parts in a way. And maybe we feel more familiarized with extraterrestrials because they sort of mm -hmm. seem like they're on their own evolutionary path in a way. And yes. that they have sort of walking the same path as we have in a different way so or in a similar way that but they're ahead of us a bit ahead of us many of them who are uh, benevolent yeah many so, of them yeah so i'd love to hear if you could share a bit about who tarp is uh mm. where they come from uh you said andromedans and mm. why they're here now and how they live their lives. I'm curious about mm -hmm. how does it look like on um, where they are <laughs> residing? 
Yeah, so here's the thing. I don't really want to disappoint too much, but they're not embodied. So the, well, at least the consciousness that I have contact and connection with, because I think it's really important to remember when we talk about aliens such as Pleiadians or, or Andromedans or the Greys or the, the reptilians, they're such broad labels and within them there are so many different bloodlines and so many different species and we're talking about ancient history to us um, uh, over many different locations, even, you know, one... Um, lot of uh, extraterrestrials they may not be from the same galaxy they may have moved and hopped around or have several different bloodlines in several different locations so i understand that when we say andromedans is a very broad term and uh the the ones that i have contact with tarp they have had a an experience of being embodied they have had an experience of being individualized but TARP are a more a collective consciousness. There's the idea that I am speaking to a group or a mass, but I don't get any one individual name. I don't get that they are sex, they have male and female. Um, there is a strong, um, the way they come to me at times is a very strong blue, uh, almost indigo, sometimes magenta glow and I have images of uh, blue mountains and blue landscapes on a sort of quite barren planet and I have also had uh, flashes of sort of insectoid um, beings as in seeing legions of them now, I think sometimes it's easy to get cross wires, cross cross wires with things like this, and I don't like to say that this is the case and this is who they are, because I think that um, what a consciousness represents um, is a summarized version sometimes of their whole consciousness, and they will present things to you that your imagination can perceive as a way of expressing it. So while I've had flashes of insectoid type ET looking beings, the majority of the time, 99% of the time, I'm seeing this glowing blue, this ethereal, the indigo blue light, and this idea of a, a floating consciousness, a collective in a sense. I don't get much about the particulars of their identity because identity, in a sense, isn't so important for them. And the name TARP, again, I when I started to channel them and when I asked their name, I really wanted it to be a fun name. When when they said TARP and I wrote it down, I said TARP. Like, I was a bit <laughs> disappointed, like, can't it be something really, you know, full of gravity and you know juicy <laughs> yeah yeah alexander or you know so right. yeah it um they are top but it seems so natural and normal and right now i've had them in my life for a few years yeah. right I, I get curious uh whether channelers like yourself are looking at other channelers and uh noticing oh i'm channeling the same being because a lot of the times I feel like you're not like all the channelers I come across channel different beings. And I find that interesting. Why are you guys not channeling like a lot of the same mm. beings? Because then it seems yeah. like there are so many beings who want to communicate with us. Well, yeah, I mean, there's that. There's obviously as many different species and races of ET that want to communicate as there are people. Um, but that's a really good question. I have actually seen a couple of channels claim to be uh, channeling Bashar. So oh. um, I, I don't come across it very often, but usually you're so right, Yannicka, they, uh, people are usually channeling someone different, right? Or something different. Um, and you can tune in you can attune yourself if you if you really want to and you and you have the ability i 
you can do that and if if all parties are you know willing and have the intention to do the same that is possible because everything is just a resonance um but um i have as far as I'm concerned with TARP, I have people that have approached me that said your name or TARP's name have come to me in a dream or in a meditation and they found me online and I'm always amazed at that. Or they say that I feel that I'm more connected to TARP after the energy or healing treatment. So I think there's, I think what you get is resonance. When you are resonating with something that someone is saying or what a channel is saying you're resonating with the energy and the consciousness of of what they're channeling and i really like to kind of um deconstruct the the word channeling because it doesn't necessarily mean an entity or a or a being or an et it could be an energy um like we were talking about christ consciousness for example um and it's i think the ultimate question to ask is, are you resonating with something that is well-being for you, is making you feel happy, is making you feel um, well, you know, rather than unwell and discombobulated? Um, so, so yes, I don't know if that really answers your question, but um, I think it's possible, but you're right, most channels don't channel the same. Yeah, and always... So also get curious about whether you, you listen to all the channelers and you feel like, oh, this is the same message, or if you feel like, oh, we have a slight different message, or is there are there some contradictions sometimes? No, I think by and by it's all pretty much the same message, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just said through different voice boxes is just said through different word processes i mean if you look at, the, at me as as one point of interpretation i'm just an interpreter but it, they're using my language my experience my understandings and my language to express which may be different to the way another channel uses the language but i think ultimately they it's usually the same message you know you mm. see it written in different ways and and it's true of the book that I've written that I've channeled that TARP have channeled through me I would say that it is presented in a unique way but it is the same message that you hear echoed through the centuries through the millennia it's it's kind of the same truth that resonates you know when you pick up a book that's channeled if it feels like the truth you know the truth when you when you read it when you hear it when you see it does that in a way mean that truths will always be truths, that truth is not something that is evolving, but it's actually constant in a way? I think it can be both because the truth, um, to us earthlings, definitely the truth can evolve as we find things out and as times change everything energies, our energies, energies of everyone around is always moving. So truths, can change things can feel right on one day or in one era and then suddenly not feel so good anymore you know nothing stays the same but it's always about finding that point where you're in alignment with the two versions of yourself your ego self and your non-physical i am self and feeling what that truth is but it's not a bad thing you know to develop that sensitivity to your intuition or to your higher self to just tap in and feel when things feel right and when they don't feel right when things feel like it's the truth or when it's not the truth because after all that would make us much more sovereign and much more in control of our health and happiness i think and our success mm -hmm. rather than listening to what you know mainstream or, or governments institutions are saying about what is good for us it'd be really great if we could just dial into ourselves more often and um, see what resonates with the truth for us. Um, before we move into channeling, I would love to speak about spiritual hygiene. We touched upon it before we started recording, uh, that if we don't have a spiritual hygiene or go, or go about the spiritual work uh, in the right way, we can uh, have uh, breaks or we can have, what did you say, like uh, broken oh, auras? Oh, yeah. auras. Uh, and in our energy bodies and mm -hmm. I thought that was 
very interesting. And there's so much out there. You know, I remember in my beginning of my spiritual journey, I came across some spiritual teachers who were very disempowering. And that was not nice to experience. Um, and that's why it's so important to me that everybody I'm interviewing mm -hmm. is the heart. And now I feel mm -hmm. like I can learn that. But mm -hmm. I would love uh, to hear your perspectives on what you mean mm -hmm. with spiritual hygiene and actually mm -hmm. going about the spiritual work in sort of the, not that there's a wrong and right way, but uh, in the practical most way, practical and healthy way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can tell you that before I channeled, I've always been sensitive. I wouldn't have said psychic. However, now I'm here, I would say, well, you probably were getting some bleed through. You just didn't probably believe it. But um, I was a very sensitive uh, young lady. And um, if I interacted with people that were mean or envious or just messed up themselves, didn't have good stuff going on in their life, or they actually had ill intention towards me for one reason or another, I would feel it. And there'd been a couple of times in my life where, you know, uh, I became sick from hanging around with someone um just painting an example that it is possible if you're very sensitive and if you have if you're a sensitive person like me you know, like many people are that I have around me then you pick up on other people's emotions other people's consciousness if they haven't got things going on that's too good for them or if they're not well you can pick up on it and it can affect you and it can affect your well-being and your health now that is when your aura is quite large and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good thing it can mean that it's you know quite dissipated and weak and um uh things can easily get in there and stick in there and you can have sort of thought uh, forms and emotions sticking to you um, and it can bring you down. So that used to happen to me a lot. Um, I'm very aware now that I work with the energy of TARP, now that I work with other people um, of what TARP bring and how easy it is you can make yourself quite wide open and vulnerable to other uh, energies including from people and how if they're not ready or if they're not integrated enough or their aura is not ready they can have the wrong kind of thoughts and feelings and emotions and energies attached to them which keep them um, resonating at a lower frequency so having duller heavier emotions difficult to move through or reoccurrences or patternings in life things that keep happening over and over again you mentioned things like that earlier um, and it's really important I, I mean equally I, I come across lots of people that are going through awakening experiences and they really want to channel or they're starting to channel um, they're starting to have trans-dimensional engagement or experience or more, more lucid um, dreams um, and they're very keen to move forward because it is exciting to make contact. And while it's good to, to wish for those things and to wish that we all have contact, um, you've got to look after yourself and your hygiene. So in much the same way that you take care of your body and your health and your diet and, you know, you take care of your skin and you, you maintain that, it's just as important to I would say maybe even slightly more important to take care of the energetic body because everything comes through the energetic body including sickness health happiness success if you just look at things like law of attraction it, it comes from energy and it comes from resonance and everything comes into your aura this kind of uh field of consciousness around you a sort of plasma field around you and if you have holes in your aura or a weak and dissipated aura something too spaced out and doesn't have a nice healthy border um you can be penetrated easily from not so favorable energies of things around you including wi-fi including toxic materials toxic thoughts toxic actions fear fear is a great one because you know it's very difficult to 
to go through a day where you don't see people or you come across something that's fear inducing it's difficult to not have a day where you're exposed to things that are trying to trigger fear in you so these cut things can um, affect your aura they can impact your aura and when your aura is not nice and healthy and symmetrical then your resonance or your spin i say spin because you have chakras it's your energy body your energy anatomy they're all supposed to be spinning around a still point and there's all supposed to have a healthy spin but if you've got um an aura that's slightly more open or weak or leaking on one side then you're going to be slightly off kilter and it's going to set this kind of sequence of chakras of vortex points up and down your body slightly off kilter and when one is spinning slowly slightly off time or slower or faster you have the imbalances in your energy body which will manifest ultimately if they're left unchecked in your emotional life your your spiritual your physical life so these things are really important and i see that obviously right now there is so much going on in this world. There is so much that one can feel overwhelmed just like that from just looking at something on YouTube and it can set everything off balance. If you're someone like me that's sensitive, you can take something in, it goes boom, straight into your heart. You might see a child somewhere that's suffering or you might see something that's very scary about you know, some fear-inducing talk about AI. By the way, not that you need to feel scared. I don't feel about AI. But um, the fear, the fear, the agony, the pain, the sadness can be so instant with this, you know, content that we see around us. We're bombarded with every day. And we need to take care of that because it goes straight in and it goes into a way that you almost feel it as deeply as the person that's actually suffering it because it's a resonance. It's like a tuning fork. We are all one. You know, but when you see fearful things, it tends to make you feel isolated or separated. Um, and you lose that um, central focus. You lose that heart-based focus. You lose that sense of unity and collective and awareness. Um, you know what? I was speaking so long, I forgot what the question was. No, uh, it's, um, <laughs> I asked about uh, spiritual hygiene. Yes. However, what, what I think we can do is actually to bring TARP in and to elaborate yeah. more on this very issue, because I would love to hear more about how we can actually have a great spiritual hygiene. Okay. All right. See you on the other side. <clears throat> so the next year here is from TARP and you can ask some questions directly. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon. We are TARP. We are pleased to be here with you, blending our consciousness with this now of your now time. How may we be of assistance to you? Hello. Thank you so much for showing up today to communicate to us and our audience listening and watching. Now, we have been speaking about spiritual hygiene, and I feel and assume that this is especially important now in the times we're living in, in the big, great shift of consciousness, and also the times we're moving into. So could you speak a little bit about how we can prevent creating holes in our aura and have broken auras and taking negative energy and how we can empower ourselves and have a spiritual hygiene? Yes, we are here to help at this time. This is something that we would like to speak to you a little bit more about. Hmm. In essence, we would say to you that it is best to keep yourself... Hmm, as integrated as possible. By this we mean uh, aware of the present moment and acknowledging and accepting, accepting of your divine mind, your divine soul. You are not mm, a mere thought form. You are a powerful divine being that has the ability to feel bliss this feeling of bliss and this idea of mm, being able to carry your bliss beyond death and your 
awareness beyond death makes you quite distinct from other such thought forms, energies or entities that can fill your auric space with fear. Things that will help you keep an, a healthy auric field around you are being spending time in nature and spending time with other beings of light and divinity, including the animals in your animal kingdom. So nature, animals of the animal kingdom, and other beings of like humans, such as yourself, where you are working with loving action, where what you are doing is not only actively loving, but passively loving. So doing everything you do in your day with an intention of love and well-being. This may seem easier to say than to do, but these are the things that keep a healthy energetic body and a healthy energetic system for everything mm, resonates correctly when one is feeling the feeling of love. When one is feeling the feeling of bliss, you are able to exalt yourself higher than maybe what you would understand is your 3D consciousness on this planet Earth. But ultimately, having a healthy energetic body is induced and kept intact by feeling the feelings of love or loving action. We do not just mean romantic love, of course, and we do mean that even if you are feeling sad or unhappy in any way, that you engage actively in the verb of loving action, and this will help you mm, recalibrate your energetic body. There are, of course, energetic actions that you can do to um, create a healthy auric field. Essentially, if you bring your mind energy and your physical energy back into the fold of your own body or your own um, plasmic, plasmic auric field around you, you are inhabiting the space, leaving it impossible for another kind of energy to inhabit it is this making sense to you for when you scatter your mind when you disperse your mind when you disperse your actions when you disperse your um, activities across many things you apply yourself thinly to many things at once you become dispersed you become dis you become scattered thereby leaving space within your auric field to be um, weakened <laughs> lessened and put off central does that make sense to you yes that was very helpful thank you so much if you do not bring your divine self into your mm, biological avatar body you do not mm, inhabit this biological body enough with presence you will leave space inside which is open to be off balance which will be factorized the more you feel mm, centered and in union with others, including with loving action, the more you will inhabit your biological avatar body and your auric field. <clears throat> that makes sense. So the, the more we are embodied, actually, the more we connect with our bodies. This is what, how I understand it. Uh, not to sort of escape from the body, which I felt uh, a lot of us were doing in the beginning of our spiritual awakening, that we sort of wanted to ascend and move away from the bodies. But you're actually saying embody ourselves more, to be more present as a human being um, in that way, yes. evolving as a consciousness on the planet. Yes, we would say own your presence. There are many layers to what you would understand as presence, but own it, including owning what happens in the present, including thoughts, emotions, actions. We would like to encourage you to own your emotions rather than quickly throw them away when they are painful. Owning your emotions allows you to integrate your emotions, which allows you to integrate all parts of your consciousness, including the subconscious mind, where much of the things that you do not want to own are buried. The more you integrate 
and the more you own the things that you have encountered in your life, including the thoughts, emotions and the actions, the more you can hold them in your space, integrate them, work through them, shine a light on them, the more you'll feel integrated, the more you are able to mm, own your presence. Presence being the physical and the non-physical. A lot of those I interview, they channel and many are saying that life is an illusion. Even Einstein said that, albeit a very persistent one. And I'm curious in our lifetime whether we will see that humanity, if this is an illusion, will wake up from that illusion and actually start to acknowledge that this is a game we're playing, that we will actually uh, have that awareness in our lifetime? Or is that thousands of years from now on? It is definitely possible for you to have this awareness in your current experience body of this lifetime. Mm, and believe it or not, everything is happening, moving very fast as you perceive it. But it will help you understand that you are mm, an embodied, compartmentalized consciousness. This is, in fact, what you are right now. You are compartmentalized within your mind and you are compartmentalized within your physicality, as in you are housed in a particular, fractalized, very streamlined, particular, unique human being, which gives you the physical illusion of separation when, in fact, we are all one. So you are a sort of box in a 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 box. There is a continual mm, fractalizing down to what you find is even within your mind. There are things that you are compartmentalizing, putting in boxes, categorizing, mm, separating out, which only works to support the idea of separation rather than union. But, of course, mm, there is a oneness. In fact, we would like to share with you that mm, even the technologies of your world can be extremely serving for you as humanity to understand that you are a compartmentalized consciousness. It will help you to understand, in fact, what you are and what you are not, that you are, in fact, a consciousness which is almost in a set up reality so that you can experience and so that you can grow and so you can understand the feeling of love and the idea of returning to that unity feeling. Is this making sense? Yes, it is. And at the same time, I get curious about 5D uh, we speak about 5D and some are saying we're in 5D, we're moving into 5D. And part of me is like, yeah, I, I get what that is. And another part is like, what is really 5D? So what are your perspectives on what is really 5D? And is that where we're heading? So are we now in 3D moving into 5D? Well, we would say that 5D is more a frequency. So the more you are experiencing higher frequencies, the more you are liaising in what you would categorize as 5D. So, of course, mm, what you will find with mm, most things in creation is that there is a, a movement, an oscillation in and out, in and out, in and out. What you keenly experience on your planet Earth is sort of binary pairs of opposites. So on, off, mm, sun, moon, light, dark, mm, this one or that one. Whereas mm, you are, in fact, oscillating in and out of different frequencies. However, you are upgrading as a whole generally, not so gently in some cases, but you are generally in clusters on your planet, upgrading and spending much of your present moments oscillating at higher frequencies. The higher frequencies, the more time you spend in those higher frequencies will indicate which direction you are moving in, which is in that upward way towards what you understand as a 5D reality. The 3D 
you might see what you would call an after effect or an after shadow of remnants of 3D phenomena around you in your world. However, with lots of, mm, we would say you are experiencing a lot of multidimensional phenomena in your world, even in the tangible world that you see represented in your media. There are things that are there, then they are not there. There are things that are happening and then not happening. There are mm, things that are visible. There are things that are hidden. There are people that have a certain understanding of a certain kind of awareness. There are other people that don't understand and they are resonating with another kind of awareness. We would call this much more already a sort of 4D consciousness, we would say that a lot of the experiences of awakening that people are thinking and feeling and experiencing can represent or match closely what you might understand as a 4D resonance. However, there are many of you also frequenting more higher frequencies than what would constitute a 4D reality and they're experiencing more and more 5d phenomena and experience in their life so it is more a blending rather than a stepping up which happens overnight or over a few seconds however there are times when there have been sudden up jumps in frequency and up jumps in resonance of a species or a race in order for them to mm, remain active as a species but it doesn't happen across mm, the whole of a species it happens to those that are willing and are ready this is making sense yes I would love to clarify a bit if I understand this correctly. So you're saying that some people, some humans are now in 3D, many are, or most are four, in 4D and some are experiencing 5D. Yes, we are saying that, but we're also saying that this is a moving canvas. So you may take one human being and in the course of one day, they can experience Experience frequencies that are belonging to those categories, all three of those categories that we state, third, fourth, fifth. All right. There are more dense things that you can be exposed to that lead to more dense, mm, slower oscillating frequency, which is more third D, which keeps you more aligned with the idea of fear and separation and mm, binary understandings of the reality around you. And then you can have mm, an experience that makes you feel more whole, more loving, more unified, more in connection with people around you or things around you or higher mm, spiritual experiences such as what the channel has had. But this can happen in a single day. But it all depends on mm, where you are most of the time or more of the time, which brings you up or down on a frequency scale. And then, of course, there are multiple beings on your planet and there are waves and there are trends. There will be an overall trend upwards. This is, in a sense, unavoidable as species of your planet that you consider to be of a lower consciousness than you they also move up too there is a continuing a continual moving upwards of a evolutionary perspective of consciousness and awareness this never mm, stops yeah that makes sense that we're moving through different dimensions uh, in a day it certainly feels like that now is 6d available for some of us are there some humans that experience that or even higher one moment, please. Yes, of course. And yes, of course, there is higher phenomena that is available, depending on where the individual human's consciousness is at that time. However, mm, understanding higher frequency consciousness does not necessarily mean that they have become it. It means that they have liaised or mm, attuned to it for a certain period of time know that um, the physical avatar body that you are in can only cope with a certain amount of energy um, coming through it um, it would start to feel out of balance or um, 
uh, out of alignment with such higher frequencies coming to it consistently if we're really talking about mm, longer term sustenance in a higher frequency uh, there you would find that this is going to happen as a gradual easing out of physical need of a body now I understand that you are higher evolved beings and you've been going through your own evolution that you and that you are a bit ahead of us in evolution. Um, I've always been curious about what happened before the Big Bang. It seems like the universe has always existed, yet science is speaking about once when it started. Now, there had to be something that happened before the Big Bang in order for the Big Bang to happen. So do you know anything about this? One moment, please. <clears throat> the Big Bang didn't happen really in the way that you are describing it. Um, here we hit some slight barriers in communication for we are quite limited with the language. However, mm, it wasn't so much as a huge big bang or explosion. It was more mm, like an idea, a pure principle of love, mm, wanting to understand itself, almost to see a mm, reflection of itself, so the one becoming the two. Mm, this was the original impulse or the original impetus to expand so that it could create some distance so that it could gaze back upon itself and experience itself from a different vantage point. This, in a sense, is the same process which happened, happens infinitesimally so that one can take the distance and feel and return to and understand the union of itself in the exploration of itself from different perspectives. So ultimately, mm, rather than calling it a Big Bang, there are continuous impulses to move away from and come back towards, which is the general movement, if you would like, of the whole universe. It is the general buzzing frequency vibration of the whole universe so it is an infinitesimal separation mm, down and down and down and down and down and on and on and on and on until you find yourselves in the reality experience that you are living dear one where you are experience many different facades of the same thing under the names and labels of many different races, species, mm, animals, beings, entities, and such. So in a sense, there was no one Big Bang. It is a continuous mm, unfolding and expansion of knowing oneself through many different perspectives. Mm. I wonder when that will become a knowledge. <laughs> Now, when is, one learns to frequent their higher self and understand the non-physical nature, the more they are less attached to their binary existence, thinking of themselves in a physical body where they are given choices. Mm. The more you realize that there is a unity of awareness, the more you will understand the nature of all that is around you. Now, can you see what is in our future timeline as humanity? Like uh, some are afraid that we will not uh, evolve in the right direction, in the right direction. Uh, and some are saying we have made it already. And others are saying, well, there are multiple futures. And it all depends on what we collect collectively are choosing in the moment. Uh, what are your perspectives on how our future looks uh, like and if it's possible to predict the future uh, after all we would say to you that it's not possible to predict the future it is possible to read the waves shall we say mm. we were going to say read the tea leaves mm. we mean by that mm, look at the energy and the momentum and the vibration collectively as you have mentioned, around 
your thoughts and what you are transmitting as a human race and in different locations around the earth because there are different realities that can be brought in from the active resonance which is happening. We can give you hmm, an idea from how it is looking right now. Well, your future is progressive. Your future is positive as we are reading it now. However, it is... How do we explain this? There will be some false starts. Mm, there will be progress made and then there will be pullbacks to regressed states of being and reality along the journey. However, it is almost what you would call one step forward, two steps back for a while, for the time being. This is how it is looking at the moment. One moment, please. But there is a grand opening, a breaking in the clouds, so to speak. <clears throat> it is not easily earned, but it is there and it is very possible and it is very likely to happen with how we see it right now. Uh, there is much positive momentum. In fact, the more mm, positive momentum there is, the sharper there will be uh, the pullbacks where it seems as if there is some regression happening. We hope you understand what we mean here. However, there will be a point where there is a huge change, a huge opening and a huge mm, almost collective understanding. It will be something that sweeps across the earth. One moment, please which brings a much more open mindset of who you are and where you are placed contextually. And it will give you an idea of freedom and ownership. Mm, what we mean by that is a sovereignhood to you as human beings. And in a sense, we understand that this sounds like it is two things that are opposite, but while you understand your sovereignty and autonomy as human beings, you will not be inclined to act selfishly and you will not be identifying fully with separateness. You will understand your sovereignty as having more of a intuitive, almost embodied divine presence in the body not quite in the near future, this is further down the line, but you will have a greater sense of sovereignty and a greater empowerment as such. And when this is happening, you will also begin to have much more reverence for each other, each other's value and each other's worth. And there will be much more abundance in your societies. So what we can say to you is there are some rough patches along the way nothing that you probably haven't heard already but this is an indication that you are moving in the right direction there will be some sharp pullbacks but ultimately there will be a very quick opening there will be some revelatory happenings or circumstances on your planet and the consciousness will spread or sweep across the planet which will enable you to feel much more empowered much more free and lead to much more Mm, personal wealth, meaning health, mm, mm, empathy, understanding, respect, mm, and abundance. Mm, there will be an idea of who you are in terms of context, in terms of mm, you as a human race and a human species. There will be new ways of governing and there will be new ways of living. There will be Mm, some unification through things that come to light that will allow you to see what it is that you are as human beings that will allow you to feel and understand your specialness as a race and it will help you to feel more cohesive when you start to identify with 
yourselves as a human race versus other. We know that sounds like a dichotomy because ultimately everything and everyone is all one, but it will be cohesive for you as a human race, which will mean there'll be less fracturing on your surface, on your planet Earth. Ultimately, in understanding your sovereignhood, you're going to feel union. Uh, we had some technical issues. All of a sudden, we couldn't hear each other, which is always strange why that happens, right? So my question was, after you've been sharing uh, some predictions about the future, now, will that happen in our lifetime, the things you've been referring to now? We will just look for you. Yes, one moment, please. Yes, it is looking very most likely in this lifetime, this current channel's lifetime. This is a reference point for you. It is extremely likely to happen in this current lifespan. All right. Now, do you have a last message for our audience today? We would say, hmm... Remember what we have spoken about in terms of understanding the integration of the two sides of self, learning to integrate and hold your feelings, hold your emotions, hold the experiences, hold the perceptions, hold your presence in your energetic sphere, hold your presence in your physical body. The more you can acknowledge who you are, the real you of who you are, which is the integrated ego, physical avatar body with the I am self, the more you will be in a position to feel unitive awareness. The more you feel unitive awareness, the more you will have an experience of a happy and healthy reality. This is an experience that will bring the real metamorphosis to humanity and your experience of planet Earth. Do not feel fear. There is nothing to feel fear with. And the more you identify and resonate with the feeling of fear, the more separation you will feel. Even such things as AI, there must not be any fear for you are a being which has a soul and an understanding of love and the feeling of bliss you are able to carry your consciousness out of your body and you are able to place your consciousness in other such big huge beneficial mm, matters of energy you have immense power do not underestimate yourselves know that your power lies in your unity of awareness and in taking care of your integrated mm, selves we offer you our unconditional love thank you and goodbye <clears throat> thank you thank you all right and you're back all right <laughs> yeah <sighs> yes that was quite a ride and it was interesting that all of a sudden we couldn't hear each other and i'm always wondering what happens you know is there some interference <laughs> some mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somewhere Mm -hmm. uh, but that was powerful, the messages that came through. Were you present? Could you notice what was uh, happening and what they said? To a degree, yes. Um, I hear the questions being asked and I, I have an opinion about them. I always think like, oh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> that? So I'm like just there, like sitting on the back seat. Um, and as you know, I think I made you aware that it's hazy for me. So I don't always carry the memory of what I've just channeled for long after the channeling. I have a recollection right now, like waking up from a sleep, but it will fade. I do, however, seem to uh, remember sort of the meta meanings. I get the gist. I'm able to carry the gist rather than the details. Mm. So, yeah. So a bit, yeah, a bit in other words. Right. Well, I think we need to wrap this up. It has been so inspirational speaking to you. And uh, I would love to ask you some general questions that I ask my guests. And the first one is, what is self-love to you? Oh, oh, I like these questions. Self-love. Um, being present. I have to say that now because Tapa said that. Being present. Having healthy boundaries which 
would also include the the energetic boundaries they were talking about. Actually, what I meant is being knowing that you can say no, you can say uh, your truth, and you don't have to give reasons for it. You can just hold the space for yourself. That's self love, knowing who you are having the confidence to hold that space in your body without having to try too hard or offer explanations or your your presence and your self love are reflected in the way you treat other people i'd say also beautiful and what is happiness to you happiness mm. i have heard someone say recently happiness um is life minus expectation. I thought that one was quite good. Um, happiness really, for me, the older I get, is the simple things. Spending time with things that bring me joy and love and wonder, the, the kind of awe, you know, just seeing really pretty things in nature, spending time with my husband, my cats, my kids it's not not that order but just really the simple things sunshine mm. fresh air peace and quiet good sleep nice food that feels like it's healing the simple things really and what is the deeper meaning of life from your perspective oh uh to not get too hung up on your purpose to actually enjoy the moment to not stress now i've experienced disease it's really important that I stay well and I decided to just put all that stress stuff down. Really, it's it's not worth it. Mm. Yeah. Be more playful. Yes. Beautiful. So where can people find you if they want to connect with you or work with you? Thanks. Could you say a little bit? Yeah. Thanks for asking. They can find me on Gail, G-A-Y-L-E dash Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S dot com. And they can follow me on X and on Instagram, Tarp Channeling. And um, they can, I have my book, book Tarp. Yep, there it is. That's available on Amazon. But um, if anyone wants to write to me, I love hearing from people or they want to book a discovery call. I love chatting to people. They don't have to book a session, but um, I have group events and I have personal offerings. You can find all of that online. Beautiful. Thank and I have you. somewhere here. <laughs> thank you so much for being a guest and for your oh, wonderful. Thank you. Been yeah, such yeah. Thank you great. so much. Thank really you. nice to connect with you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. <laughs>